We live in a world ruled by tyranny, where knowledge is suppressed and ignorance is glorified. A world where propaganda and misinformation travel the airways at the speed of lies. But in the midst of the violence and chaos, a great awakening is taking place. And as the media empires continue to collapse, a new network is forming. A network of truth. A network of courage. A network of awareness. Peace and greetings. You are now tuned into the Network of Awareness podcast radio station, where we examine current events, politics, health, finance, and topics of cultural relevance in America and throughout the world, while bringing you insightful interviews with guests that will both educate and inspire you. And now, your host of the Network of Awareness podcast radio station, Aura the and gifts like Aura, the informational list. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Peace. And greetings, people. Welcome to the Network of Awareness. And this is a live broadcast with a pre recorded episode. And we're going to be presenting some really powerful information to help you, brothers and sisters, to deal with the adversity that we experience in life. And I have a special guest that um that is going to be on the show that I interviewed previously. And uh, this show today is called The Key to Resilience. And the, the guest that I'm going to bring on, let me tell you a little bit about her. Now, this woman is a very powerful and beautiful human being that has overcome some major adversity from a young age until present day and is doing so well in helping people and being charitable with the gifts she's been given and also with the education and the wisdom that she's gained from the adversity that she's experienced in her life. And who I'm talking about, I'm talking about none other, none other than Donna Tajian, who is a life mastery coach sharing keys to turn our baggage into luggage, to live the life of their dreams. That's what she helps people to do. She's the founder of Vibrant Living International, a nonprofit organization. She helps bring accelerated transformation to people across the world. Her passion is to help reach you fill your potential. Donna has been speaking and coaching for over 25 years. She's developed a powerful program or programs to help women rise above a painful past so that they can live the life of their dreams. Her clients have said she will help you walk away from overwhelmed stress and self-doubt into peace and confidence, like a refreshing vacation for your body and soul. She also produces a podcast called You Were Designed for Greatness and has written four books. Her client says she has a knack for turning fear into excitement and exposing lies so the truth can shine. And what better guest to have on the network of awareness, right, brothers and sisters? And by the way, she has a free book that she's given a free copy for on the description page. So if you get to listen to this episode, you will have access to the link and also to her website, which is um, ivibrantliving.com which is all in the description page, brothers and sisters. So, without further ado, I'm going to be bringing on uh, Donna and the interview that I did. So, brothers and sisters, I hope that you enjoy this um, 
this particular episode, I know I did. I learned a great, great deal from it. And I thought it was a wonderful episode to to bring in in regards to, you know, Faith Over Fear Fridays. So let's get this show on the road. Let's get it started quickly, right? All right. <clears throat> Welcome to the show, Donna. I'm glad to have you on the Network of Awareness. How are you doing today? I am fabulous. How are you? I'm doing wonderful as well. I'm looking Good. forward to the uh, the springtime and, uh, you know, getting, uh, I'm not looking forward to this humidity that's coming in Florida. But um, besides that, you know, uh, looking forward to the to the springtime. Where are you located? I am in Michigan. Oh, okay. So you're in the cold. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sunny and probably about 40 today. Um, okay, that's not that bad. It's not that bad, but we could get snow again. Um, but I grew up in the South. I really don't like the humidity. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing. And, and And this weather in the wintertime in the South is so beautiful. It's wonderful, but... Once it hits about May, then going into June, uh, mm -hmm. feels like you're in a microwave. It does feel like it. <laughs> so, Donna, I decided to name this episode uh, the key to um, uh, the key to resilience, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of what you and and from my perception, a lot of what you focus on has to deal with being resilient. Yes, and overcoming adversity. Mm -hmm. So can you uh, talk a little bit about what it is that you do um, in regards to your, um, you know, your coaching in regards to Vibrant Living International and how you got inspired, how the inspiration for this came and kind of you can talk about the development of this uh, not-for-profit organization that you now founded? Okay. That was a lot in that question. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, usually when I ask questions, there's always a lot into it. So take as much time as you want to answer it. Oh, yeah. I'm like, there was a lot in that question. Um, where I am today is the first part. Um, I'm a life mastery coach and uh, Vibrant Living International we have clients around the world being able to inspire people to live a vibrant life. And to do that, that one of the keys is overcoming adversities because we all face it. It doesn't matter where, what walk of life we come from, what, what we are, our, you know, economics, it doesn't matter. There's adversity. And if the last few years taught us, it's it, the whole world was affected by everything that has occurred. So learning how to overcome adversity is the other thing that I say about vibrant living. I want to be a messenger of hope and stop identity theft. And mm. I'm not talking about our credit cards. Right. What are I, you talking about? <laughs> I am talking about those situations or relationships or things that we're involved in where labels have been put on us or we have put them on ourselves. Um you can't do that. You're stupid. You'll never amount to anything. Who do you think you are or whatever? Or it's always our fault. Then things go wrong. All of those kind of things is uh, messes with who we really are. Um, even uh, what uh, you're supposed to do for a living could mess. It's like all kinds of things that happen to us. Um where I started in all of this, I have been inspiring and meeting for with women, um, not always intentionally, but it ended up being that way for, for over 25 years. I have had regularly scheduled appointments, but Vibrant Living didn't start till about 10 years ago. So it was one of those moments where what do I really love to do and how do I do that? And we all have those moments. It's like we do a lot of different things, but what do we really love to do? Um, and overcoming adversity 
to answer that part of your question. Um, started when I was a child and I also became a mother at the age of 15. Mm. Um, it was a uh, non-consensual situation. That's as far as I'll go with that. But at 15, I am a mom. I raised my little girl and being able to figure out how to handle what talking about labels, the shame, the embarrassment, the anger, the resentment, the fear, all of those things were part of that little girl. And how do I rec and, you know, when you're 15, your life is it's like everything is a catastrophe, even when it's not. And it feels like it could be the end of the world. Right. So learning how to rise above adversity. I've had it firsthand. And to be from that young little girl to now being a woman affecting and helping inspire is my goal. People, uh, all the people I encounter is what Vibrant Living is about. Great. And um, what was your, when you were growing up, um, what was your aspiration or dreams? What were you, what did you want to do when you were a young girl and you were going to become an adult, what did you see yourself doing? When people asked me that as a child, all I said is, I know I want to help people. I didn't really know what that would look like, but I always had the desire to help people. Um, I always wanted to be a mom. I just didn't think it would happen the way it did. <laughs> I, uh, I have now been married 38 years. I have two more children. And Congratulations. Seven, grand, and seven grandchildren. So wow. um, all of that has been um, um, a part of who I am and uh, it shaped me. Well, you know, I, I love the work you do um, because um, one of the things that's in your biography, um, and I'll read it out here, it says, she also produces a podcast that's called You Were Designed for Greatness. And hopefully I could be on that because I'm about to set up an account on Podmatch for to be a guest on other people's podcasts. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go into these four books you've written. So you've written four books. And it says that your client says she has a knack for turning fear into excitement and exposing lies so the truth can shine through. And I love the way that ends because that's exactly what I do here in the Network of Awareness is that I expose the lies so that mm -hmm. we can better understand the truth. Because if we don't know we're being lied to, how can we even know that the truth does exist? Absolutely. Um, if you could talk about because uh, you mentioned something about when you got pregnant when you were er when you were young, right? And and the things that came with that. When was the first time that you started to come to this understanding that? we become overwhelmed with guilt and shame and the way we look at ourselves and that low self-esteem mentality that we tend to gravitate to and cling on to. When did you get an understanding that you were having that experience for yourself? And then if you can also talk about the transformation of when you decided that you wasn't going to look at yourself that way any, any longer, and started to look at yourself in a whole different light. I don't. I could. I don't know that I could say specifically when um, the different shift in mindset occurred, but it was pretty quickly for me where I began to um, refuse the labels that were put on me. I'll put it that way. Um, I. Uh, for those of you listening, you probably aren't aware that I'm a redhead, but those of you watching YouTube and stuff, you are. But I had a I've got a little bit of sass and I'm like, I'm gonna prove them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> My sister's a redhead, she's got a lot of sassiness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and I grew up in the South, so sass was a word. <laughs> right. It was a word we used right. often. And so I I wouldn't, I didn't say it on the outside, but on the inside is I don't know how. But I'm going to prove all these people that are saying all this stuff. Um, I'm going to prove and all my fears that are speaking up at me. I'm going to prove it all wrong. And I 
my faith, I had a faith in God. That was a whole lot of the strength that I had discovered and found that we are stronger than we think we are. Um, and learning how to tap into that strength. So very young, I would say, I was saying things like that. I didn't know that I was refusing labels. I wouldn't have said it that way or anything. It was just, I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to show them because I know that there is something I'm supposed to do. And I always had that knowing. And so, but learning how to walk that out is another. And so I have a few keys to resilience, to overcoming adversities. And one of them is, is learning, looking for the gift in the adversity. Now, this isn't a pretty gift. They're not wrapped in pretty bows. And we're like, oh, this is so beautiful. We're like, this really sucks. Right. <laughs> it's those kind of gifts. And but there is a gift in every adversity if we begin to look for it. And the idea that I'm beginning to look for the gift shifts my perspective from looking at my feet and woe is me, because you and I probably have both had both those days. Why is this happening to me? Right. Why, all of those uh, and our pity parties for one that nobody wants to come to. Um, and we've all had those days. And so beginning to look for the gift um, and how can I grow? How can I become stronger? How can, how that everything can work for my good? It just might take a little bit of while. I tell a story that's, I don't know where I got it. So now it's become mine. Um, two kids were put in a room. This of course is make-believe. Two kids okay. were put in a room full of manure or some kind of poop. <laughs> and one kid sat down in the corner. Now I've been this kid sit down in the corner. Oh, my life stink. You know, it's full of, you get the picture. Um, you know, it's hit the fan. It's all of those things. And my life just stinks and it's always going to stink. And it just feels like that. The other kid, and I'm, I'm going to make her a girl with red hair because I'm using myself as the analogy. And she knocks on the door and says, can I get a shovel? And they're like, yeah, but why do you want a shovel? Well, with this much poop, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> and that's what I'm talking about. Look for the gift in the middle of all of the things. It And don't make what's happened to you, if your life was a book, don't let it be the whole book. Make it a page, a paragraph, at the most a chapter, and then close it and start a new one. Release the things of the past so that you can be resilient. Be You were designed for greatness to live to your fullest and vibrantly. So that are some, those are a couple of, we may go, yeah, I know that. But walking it out and thinking about it on a daily basis till we can close the chapter and start a new one. Absolutely. You talked about your faith and I have a strong faith in the most high God. And um, now more than ever, I read scriptures way more yeah. than I ever did. And uh, I, I have a, a, a better understanding and um, a faith in the teachings of Christ, the Messiah, and the the level of having an under, a level of compassion and love for my neighbors like I'd never had before. Mm -hmm. And um, something I heard you say in, in what you were talking about where you can find that gift. I talk a lot about when it's bad. I did a show called when it's bad, it's still all good. Mm -hmm. And, um, just, just last year, um, I finally, because of these bad experiences that I had, they were a blessing in disguise because it's led, led me to a lot of wonderful people now. And, um, a lot of wonderful experiences that I didn't think I was going to have in my life based mm -hmm. on what I was dealing with, because my reality at that time, not that it was grim, but I was just dealing with some real toxic people. They were draining a lot of energy out of me and um, I overcame it. And that's when I did the episode when it's bad or good, but the blessing in it and all, there were so many, but the one significant one was that in my mid forties, I finally started learning the, the responsibility of how to set boundaries, which mm -hmm. I never did before in my life. Mm 
And it's just crazy that I can admit it because I was a little embarrassed to admit that, that in my mid forties, I'm finally learning how to set boundaries. Yeah. And I didn't know how to do that before. And it's one of the reasons that led to these toxic relationships that could have been prevented if I knew how to set boundaries. Yeah. But it took an extreme, ugly situation, a real toxic, evil, wicked situation that I was put in spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically <laughs> in order for me to gain that understanding that's just yeah. been a blessing ever since. To now move forward with being able to set boundaries so that... I know how to identify something that I've experienced before and prevent it from happening again and not letting lightning strike twice in the same place. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, like now when you when you came to this understanding that you can you can work through this adversity, um what really inspired like was there a certain situation that inspired you to start this organization was there anything in particular where you say you know what i'm gonna start this can you bring us back to that time when that happened yeah i uh, had been continuing to meet with people but it was on a volunteer basis all of these all of these decades at this point and about 10 years ago i had taken a job at a nonprofit organization thinking that this might be the avenue where I can use my gifts even more. Um, ended up having, man, it was going well for a while and management changed and um, it was a bit toxic and <laughs> just to put it mildly. Um, but I was holding on, you know, how, why do we hold on to the bad? <laughs> and I was just holding on to this thinking that, I don't know, this must be it. Maybe I just need to figure it out. You know, may I need to try harder and all of those things. And so finally it came to an end where um, I left the job mutually. They offered me to leave. I decided I'm leaving. And from that soul searching, it's like, what do I really want to do? And if I could do anything, what would I be doing? And that's how Vibrant Living was born. It was one of those other dark days. It's like, I'm feeling lost. I've lost a job. I feel hopeless. I don't know what to do. Um, and another really big key that I've learned through all of this is having compassion, not just for others and forgiveness, but for myself. Yes. And that is a huge piece to be able to be free from this, to build that resilience, as I call it in one of my programs, turning our baggage into luggage. So right. we can build the life we dream. Um, and one of the best quotes, it's not mine, but I love this, is boundaries are not walls, they're doors where people mm. can enter. Wow. And I love that. I'm not building a wall. I'm building a door. This is the way you can enter my life. Mm, you mm, can't mm. break in the bedroom and break the window and climb in. You have to walk through the door. And this is the way you enter the door. If you don't want to enter this way, then you don't enter my house. Wow. And I love that because I everybody thinks of, of boundaries being this huge wall, keeping people out. It's not. It's how you can enter. And to me, I love that analogy better to be able to say, I'm not not loving people, right? Because you've talked about that, loving our neighbors. I love you, but this is the way we can have a relationship. This is what's okay. This is what's not okay. And creating that space if they choose. That's real love. It's not being walked on. It's not letting everybody use us. It's learning how, because I am respecting myself as well as you in the process of learning how to build that resilience, to recover from the trauma of some of these relationships and situations that have happened to us so that we can live vibrantly. Well, I already know what I'm going to use as the promotional snippet when I'm doing my audiograms. <laughs> that was powerful. Do you remember where the quote was from that you quoted? You said that um, it's not yours. Where did you get I, that from? I was searching on, I did a whole series last year on boundaries 
Um, and I just Googled what are boundary quotes and I found it. So you could search. I don't remember who it came from. That um, is an amazing but, quote. I, that I, is an I, amazing I quote. It. it was the best way. I, I'm like, this describes it. Wow. Um, and I did a whole series on boundaries last year. Yeah, let's um, talk a little bit about that, about your podcast. How long have you been podcasting for? Uh, four and a half years. And how's that been going for you? Like, how, how's the experience of podcasting? Because I've been doing it for three years now, uh, even though I did radio before, <laughs> but now with podcasting, a little different. So how's your experience been for the past four well, years? Well, I've never done anything like it before. So I didn't know what I was doing when I got started with it all. Um, I didn't I didn't start it to I uh, to uh, which I may yet make a lot of money or to, you know, monetize it or anything like that. I, I, I started it to be a resource for people to know that they were designed for greatness and to bring some inspiration. It's a podcast full of stories of overcoming and tools and tips of how to rise above adversity. So that's what the podcast is about. Um, I have fun doing it. I don't overtax myself with the amount of time I spend on it, but create something quality and it's every other week right now. Okay. Well, hopefully I could be on it because I got a, I got quite of a, an adversity, overcoming adversity story for you. Well, we um, can talk about that for sure. <laughs> definitely. Um, so now that you like what what's some of the things you can share like when it comes to your clients and obviously you don't have to go into specifics about names or whoever but can you share like uh, a story that stands out to you in regards to your experiences of your 25 years of coaching some <laughs> of the magnificent things that you've seen unfold from you having that one in one conversation and helping somebody to overcome their fears, their adversities, and helping them to see that that they can carry that luggage wherever they go, but it doesn't mean like they accept fear as permanent or failure as permanent and just look at it as just an experience on this wonderful journey called life. Yes, that's one of my paradigms that I teach. There's no such thing as failure, only feedback. Right. Um, and if we use it that way anyway, we can get stuck in the failure. Failure to me um, when I was younger was worse than death. <laughs> it's like I'm going to avoid it at all costs. Oh, stories. Um, it is interesting when I share stories to be able to try to paint a picture of if you're a business coach, you can say you increased in revenue by this month and you got charts and graphs and all of the things. But when you're talking about stuff that's broken on the inside, all of the trauma and things that happen, um, we're really good at sometimes putting on a happy face. Have you ever found that? <laughs> it's like right. and so learning how to take someone, um, some of a, a couple of my, I'm going to mix some clients together uh, to, for the sake of their stories of sexual abuse in as a child. Um, and you know, now they're adults and they don't know why they're having health issues. They don't know why they can't sleep well. They have trouble with relationships um, and they don't, are afraid to speak their mind. And those are, you know, and so these are all uh, even, even self-hatred at times. And so these are all symptoms of that. And they've been in counseling for, for years and still feeling this way and they have faith in God and they're praying, but it doesn't seem to leave and they don't know why. And that's a before picture. Now after picture, the program I'm referring to is turn your baggage into luggage. And I use the word luggage because now I've got a suitcase and sunglasses and a sun hat on for me because I can't get sunburned <laughs> and I'm going on a trip and I'm fulfilling my life of my dreams. When I picture baggage, it's the black trash bags that are all stinky. And that's the difference to me in those particular phrases. Now, after this program, uh, one of the women said to me, I can't believe it, Donna. I'm free. I don't feel the weight. I don't feel the shame. 
I'm able to say, I like that. And I don't like that. I'm able to stand up for myself. I've started, one woman started speaking in front of groups and leading groups. She'd never done that before. And being able to have their health improved just because their soul is healing and sleeping better and all of, and the relationships improving because healthy boundaries actually can increase relationships, the right ones. And so learning how to walk all of that out to go from self-hatred or, or low self-esteem to feeling confident. And, and then you describe that by the way their face looks, by the way they're interacting with people, by the way they're not hiding anymore, the way they begin to trust. These are all a mixture of stories of people who are and no longer anxious, coming off of anxiety meds. Um, all of these kind of things are part of the picture of having a vibrant life. Amazing. <clears throat> One thing I've noticed with people that go through severe trauma as a child, especially when it comes to se uh, sexual or physical abuse, is that that's one of those things where um, it, it is hard to recover from something like that. But I noticed that the people that do wind up doing amazing things with their lives. Like yeah. they're like uh, they're miracles because, you know, the the the, tra the trauma from experiencing something that young, it it. It never leaves you, but it can strengthen you. One one thing I truly believe in is that whatever doesn't kill you makes you actually stronger. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, um, I had someone say that to me when I told my whole story more in depth is, uh, Donna, you're a walking miracle. And I smiled politely, you know, and nodded, thank you very much. And I walked away and I went, this miracle was one decision after another decision after another decision. And they look like miracles, but everyone can choose no right. matter what we face. And it doesn't have to be hard. Um, it doesn't have to. And I believe that God has given me this program to help people recover. It doesn't have to be that abuse, but other things. Who can measure what pain feels like? We all have it. We right. all have disappointment and, and trying to say one was worse than the other. It just hurts and um, helping and it, and it makes us withdraw and hide instead of shining. And so learning how to be able to let all of that go. I have a systematic path that I take people through that every time it produces results to be able to help people um, excel. And, and recover. How do you, um, spiritual growth, mm -hmm. how do you approach that? Like, how do you, when you coach people on their spirituality, uh, many of us have different understandings of that. And we, not everybody sees spirituality the same way, especially when it comes to like religions. Everybody mm -hmm. has certain types of uh, religious beliefs. And then there's more of a, an awakening to where people are starting to just become more spiritual, where yes, they, they take all the different things. And they that, mix them all together. <laughs> right, right. They mix them all together and they and it works for them. It's kind of like what Bruce Lee taught. It's like, you know, only go with what works. Whatever doesn't work, do away with. Yeah. Um, because when you're fighting, if, you know, if you're not good at kicking, maybe that's something you shouldn't use. But if you're a better puncher, then go with that. So, what well, is I don't that like that analogy do? with with God, but that's okay. <laughs> I get, no, yeah, <laughs> I get your point. Um, to answer your question, is it depends on what the the client wants. Um, if they want to grow spiritually, then I that's an individualized situation that we talk with them through. Um, I'm coming from the Christian perspective, but I have people that are not Christians that, as you know, use they wouldn't use that label, if you will. Right. Um, to find themselves and helping them to grow in their experience in how they relate to God. Um, I'm personally not of the thing that just mix it all together and it works because I'm not quite sure that that's true. 
but people try all different kinds of resources. And I love that they're trying because it means they're seeking. And whenever you seek, you will find. That's a promise that God makes. And so learning how to allow people the freedom to do the seeking without judging, without any, any labels per se, and just allow people to seek so that they can arrive at what the truth is. And so that's a very personalized way um, that other, other than that, my program isn't specifically about God um, or anything like that. So when it comes to your faith in Christ, mm -hmm. um, what's the, what's one of the biggest things in regards to applying it to your life? Because, uh, you know, the knowledge and wisdom and understanding that Christ set as the example in his walk and in the sacrifice for our sins. Uh, what's the biggest takeaway that you've gotten from what Christ teaches in the scriptures on how we should be and how we should treat our fellow brothers and sisters? Uh, well, I talked a Is little... that, by the way, is that thunder that I'm hearing? No, it wasn't thunder. Oh. Um, oh. It was a neighbor pulling their garbage can to the house. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and it's okay. outside. So, no, I apologize for that on the recording, but. Okay, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> <That's better. laughs> um, to, uh, there's a lot that you ask in that question, and you do that. <laughs> but yeah. the, the, the thing of, uh, when I can truly, the biggest thing I will take away from that is when Jesus said, love our neighbor as ourself. And if you pause and think about sometimes how we treat ourselves, it's not so great. And so learning how to love myself in a healthy way and receive love, because I can only love you to the capability that I have received love. Because other than that, it's human love and you've pissed me off and you're out of my life, right? So learning how to receive God's love, then I can in turn love myself fully and then love my neighbor. And so to me, learning how to receive love, and it goes me back to, you talked about sacrifice. I think one of my favorite, favorite phrases that Jesus said is it is finished. And if we could get the concept that he did everything that needed to be to restore a relationship with God, we wouldn't try so hard. And every single denomination I know can lean toward religion where I've got to work and do something to prove that God loves me. And Jesus said, it is finished. And if we could grasp that, I mean, I could do a whole podcast. <laughs> that's a whole episode in itself. So that's one of my favorite uh, three words. <laughs> I'm going to give you a scripture, right? And we're going to talk about this briefly because, um, People, especially in this country, but all over the world, have become more and more critical of others. Um, it's something I talk about in my narcissism series, where you got people that are going to find something wrong where there's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And then you're also going to have those same people that are always looking to judge others, but are very much hypocrites because they have so much wrong with them. But they're always quick to tell other people what's wrong with them instead of looking at themselves in the mirror and getting their house clean because their house is super dirty and they got a lot of problems, but they want to try to find something wrong in someone else. So I'm going to read to you the description and I want you to let me know how in your 25 years of coaching, how you deal with this, um, whether it's showing people how not to, to live this way or also when you're dealing with somebody like this, showing them a different way to perceive others when it comes to that compassion, especially. Um, so that the 
the verse I'm going to read is from um, Matthew chapter 7. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to read verses uh, 1 to 5 mm -hmm. in the King James Version. So it says, judge not that ye not be, uh, that ye be not judged. Mm -hmm. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Mm -hmm. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thy own eye? Or wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull the mote out of thine eye? And behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eye. Okay. So I read that to you because um, how do you show people to to not be so hypocritical in, in the way they see others? and focus on fixing themselves before they can even be an example to others and give other people advice and tell them things that they need to correct in their lives. <clears throat> oh, that's well, a, that's a, <laughs> yes. I hear the garbage can again. No, nope. um, I'll try no to take that out in the audio as much as possible, but on the video, I probably won't, but that's okay. That's okay. There, there's no garbage can right now. So I don't know what you're hearing, but it's quiet. Oh, okay. Here. Um, but, uh, to answer your question, um, as a life mastery coach, I am not pointing out, if you will, when people are judging, um, and if they've come to me, usually they're looking at themselves. So that's okay. one thing that's a little bit that's different is, is if someone's coming to a coach or to a counselor or to someone for some support, usually they're looking at their own life and learning how to do that. Um, but if I turn around and judge people for judging me, I'm doing the same thing. Right. Um, so learning to be able to just let people be where they are. Uh, one of my paradigms is, is whatever you judge, you retain. Whatever you judge, you will repeat. So when I'm talking, when I'm talking with clients about that, it's usually about their own behavior. So let's say I want to lose weight. It's an easy one for us to all relate to. We all can kind of measure it and get it. And I am sitting in front of Netflix again, eating potato chips and I'm supposed to be at the gym <laughs> and I am not. And so, and then I'm like, why I can never do this. I'm, and I begin to beat myself, self be self-critical of myself or my behavior. But as long as I continue to judge the behavior, I will never change it. And it happens in, I think this is one of the reasons why when we've had alcoholic parents, we either become one or marry one or both, that we have judged it. We haven't learned how to release it. We haven't learned how to build forgiveness and compassion into the picture. And we end up repeating the whole, the whole picture. I'm not sure that specifically answers the question you are asking. No, it does. But it does. When Jesus was talking about not judging others, there's a whole lot behind that because whatever you put out, you're going to get back. And if I'm mad and critical at you and judging you, I'm going to receive it back. And it's not what it's not the harvest I want to receive. Right. It doesn't change the other person ever. People don't respond to being critical and judge. You don't get people to change their mind because you bow breed them or humiliate them or whatever. That's not why people change. Love is what changes things. And so learning how to, if there are people that the world is all, if I think if we could get a dose of kindness, it could change the whole world. If everybody would just be kind. And all I can do is start with me. That's the only one that I can change or do anything about. And so let the kindness begin with us. And if people are mean, be kind back and see how things begin to change. Two people, you can't fight if only one person is fighting. It eventually stops. Either you stop or you leave the situation. Depends on how toxic that is. But that, that's my thoughts about that. 
Yeah, thank you. You're basically saying pull the beam out your own eye. It's <laughs> focus on that, you know, instead of trying to focus on that molt, that little particle in the and other person's eye. Sometimes you need help seeing the beam. We right. don't always. We don't always. It's not like a, it, a lot of uh, people aren't always doing it on purpose. It's just it's just what they've learned, and they don't always see the beam. And so when we begin to search for how can we be better, that's when we give the opportunity for us to see that beam. Can um you what are the four books that you've written and what does each book cover? Um, I only have three that are out right now, and okay. um, two of them are free ebooks, and the other one is for sale. Uh, one of them is called From Frazzled to Freedom, and I share exactly what it says. How do I go from stressed out, freaking out, overwhelmed to freedom where I am filled with confidence? So that is a book with tips on how to do that and some resources that are in there. Um, that's available on my website. The other one is called An Umbrella on a Sunny Day. You know how we always wait for that other shoe to drop. You know, it's waiting. So I got this title from... It's sunny today, but I better bring my umbrella because it always rains on me. And sooner or later, I know I'm going to get a rain cloud. The mm -hmm. whole world might be shining, but I got a rain cloud over me and I need my umbrella. So that's what that book is about. It shares my own personal story of the teenage trauma and things that I occurred and some tips and tools to how can I put my umbrella away, enjoy the sunshine. So that's what that book is about and also has women sharing their stories. So there are those personal stories that people wanted to hear. There's more stories in that book as well. Right. The book that's for sale is called The Key to Transform Your Life. And the key okay. is understanding the power of your words. And so mm -hmm. I talk about how the power of your words are. And then there are 30 days of affirmations or declarations to say each day has different ones. And um, I think there's about seven or eight on each page each day so that you can choose what works for you. And it gives you 30 days so you can begin to get in the habit of saying life-giving words, not death-giving words. Wow, that's beautiful. And now and all of this can be on... Um... 99. Okay. Now, all this is on the link that you uh, have on here where it says view.flowdesk.com, or is there another website? No, my website is the letter I, vibrantliving.com. Okay. If you could send that to me on um, Podmatch, I'll make sure to put that in the description page for this episode. Okay. And um, I'm also going to share this one where it says uh, view.flowdesk.com forward slash pages with the numbers. I'll have that in the description box as well. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm going to wrap things up here. So the last thing I'm going to ask you is if there's one thing that you would like to say, some closing comments in conclusion to this episode on the key to resilience and any last words that you want to leave the listeners with, uh, the floor is yours. Um, in closing, this has been a great conversation about, a, and there's a lot of resources here to begin to apply. And one of the other keys to being able to build that key to resilience is not to do it alone. When we have been um, wounded and have pain and disappointment, we may not physically withdraw, but we build walls, right? Right. And so learning how to reach out and get safe support and help. So don't do it alone. Get a coach, get a counselor, get someone with a track record to help you be the best you you can be because it is possible and it is easier than you think. Well, wow, that's great. All right. So uh, brothers and sisters that are going to be viewing this as well as listening this on po uh, podcast platforms across the board. Um, I hope that you got great substance from this episode. I know I did. And um, if you want more information on Donna's coaching and also to be able to get her free books and the ones that you can purchase, just go to the uh, links below in the description box 
and um, you'll find out everything you need from her website and from her other link to her book. So Donna, I want to thank you for, for taking the time out to be on the show. I know it was a long time coming. I'm I'm (laughs) glad that we finally got this squared away because for those that don't know, I was supposed to do this episode last year (laughs) with Donna, I think in the beginning of 2022. So it's been a long time coming, but I'm glad that we got to do this, you know, sometimes, and you know, this, uh, the way God works is that, uh, there's a saying that, uh, God may not be there when you want him to be, but he's always on time. So this episode couldn't have come at a better time. So thank you again, Donna. Um, have a great day. And uh, I'll be contacting you soon on PodMatch, and hopefully we can work something out with uh, your podcast. Sounds good. I'll put information for you in the in PodMatch. So. Yeah, and I'll be sharing some of the promotional um, audiograms that I share on social media with you as well if you want to share with your audience. Perfect. Definitely the uh, when you quoted about the boundaries being the open door. <laughs> Love it. All right, so thank right. you very much, Donna. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, brothers and sisters and people from around the world, I hope you really enjoyed that um, that interview for The Key to Resilience. A um, lot of things that uh, I personally learned in that episode. And it's very interesting how when you meet people that have gone through extreme adversity, And I'm talking about the extreme. And I've been through some extreme stuff when it comes to life and death situations, but nothing compared to what other people have overcome. I mean, it's quite amazing, some of these stories. And um, these people that have this resilience to endure, that's the most high. That's the most high. That's that spiritual being having the physical experience. Because what comes first is the spiritual being. This physical flesh is temporary, brothers and sisters, and we all know that. That once somebody supposedly dies, and when you think of the word death or just somebody dying, it's so instantaneous, it's so quick, it's so abrupt. It only really lasts a few seconds, if not even a second, once the person leaves their body. And then they take that spiritual journey. So we got to do the most with what we have while we're in these physical bodies. Because I, you know, I can't prove this to be true, but I truly believe that This realm that we call earth is school, school for the spirit. It's something I've talked about with several brothers and sisters, especially uh, Aqua Rai in the episodes that him and I did. If you are listening to this, you want to tune into those. They're in the beginning of the season, like Faithful Friend and Mechanics of Skin, of, of Skin, of Sin, and the Prince of the Power of the Air. So we talk about this school for the spirit. We have to get certain things together. We have to get things in order before we leave these bodies. And that's part of looking into the mirror. And it's very hard to do because we live in a society that is so driven on teaching you to be egoic, teaching you how to edge God out of your life. And when you're constantly encompassed and surrounded in that type of an environment every single day of your life, that's the spiritual warfare. It's trying to figure out a discipline to your own life and not cater to what the status quo society is telling you you should be and being like, okay, let me do that. You know, let me be like this. Let me be artificial instead of being organic with that which is and always will be, which we all come from. And those those that are working on that discipline and getting better and better each day. And then those that are going against it and they're in constant conflict because that's the battle with the, you know, choosing either Satan or the most high. And then there's those that don't even care. They, they, they just, they proudly accept that reality. Kind of like uh cipher. You have a lot of ciphers out there from the matrix where it's like, they know that the steak that they're eating is not real, but it still tastes all so good to them. So brothers and sisters, I hope that you got great edification and, you know, a lot of knowledge and, and um, understanding from this particular episode. I know I did. 
And, um, you know, we're going to, I'm going to go into the Sabbath feeling really good about this week because a lot of great people have come on to this show for season five. And I truly mean that a lot of inspirational people from the moment we started season five, which is great in the standings, it hasn't stopped. And I can tell you that it's only going to get better because I'm going to do everything in my power to the grace of the most high to make sure that that happens. And I'm going to be very diligent in providing this type of information because I think it's needed now more than ever because of that malevolent force, the powers that shouldn't be that are pushing that malevolent force on us every single day. So we got to be the opposite. And when we're walking with the Most High in Christ, with the Messiah, with Yah, I mean, all things are possible, infinite possibilities, and there's nothing that can keep you down. And whatever doesn't kill you does make you stronger. So, With that being said, brothers and sisters, I'm going to exit out of here and um, we're going to we're going to probably do some bonus episodes this weekend, but it's going to be a surprise and um, on multiple platforms. So what I mean by that is that it's not just me. We have another podcast that's really um, doing some great things in educating people and inspiring people and serving And that's the uh, Council on Christ Relations, which is from the BOCC, which is the Body of Christ Church. We also have my brother, Billy Izzy, who he hasn't really done much, but I'm telling you when he's he's coming back, he's coming back better than better than ever with the Golden App podcast. And then we got uh, brother Oxakai with one on one with Oxakai. And then, of course, Passion Pursues Purpose, which I will be putting back on. And we're going to start a whole new season and start from start a whole new season one again. It's going to be a remake of season one. So I hope that you enjoy this Faith Over Fear Friday uh, episode. And um, for those that are going to be celebrating this Sabbath, um, you know, enjoy those that are going to be celebrating their weekend and uh, looking to, you know, relax. I know I am. And uh, let's play this uh, instrumental, uh, Hold It Down Again. It's one of my favorites. So brothers and sisters, when you live in the present, like Sister Donna is definitely living in the present, there's always an opportunity for a new beginning. And don't look for the light at the end of the tunnel. Because the light is and always will be within you. So light up that tunnel and find your way through the darkness. This is all the information saying peace, love and light and all praises to the most high. Let's go. to the net of awareness. awareness.